Coach Jamal, just uh, you hear Coach Bell, you know, just in terms of the the role now that you're playing and, and, and being in there and starting. What, what's it been like for you? Um, it's been fun, especially since I know that my teammates trust me. You know, it takes a long way when the guy is behind you saying, Ma, we got you, man. You you lead us and we're going to be right behind you. So I've been taking my confidence been getting higher because I know that they depend on me and they know they expect me to lead them in a way that make us successful. So i just been trusting God and just doing my part and playing my part. And the thing, everything else is going to take care of itself. How would you rate yourself this season? How have you played? Uh, it's still so much season left to play, but so far I give myself a, a strong eight, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, last game I had a good game, but I kind of felt myself being a little lazy as we started running the score up. And, you know, I want to be that consistent guy no matter who we playing, no matter the talent, no matter I want to be the same guy. So, you know, I want to, I kind of give myself a bad grade for that one. But as far as the situation that I was put in and the start that I got against TCU and the games that's, you know, still to be played, I feel confident as the season starts going because we're only going to get better as a defense. I'm only going to get better individually. We're only going to get better as a team. So things are only going to look on the upside. The, the confidence that, that Saturday's game give y'all Something where y'all did y'all need a little bit just you know coming off the TCU game and um you know as a defense I felt like we played well versus TCU and that gave us a lot of confidence to keep building and no matter if I take it back to the Rice game in the second half you know the defense we started coming together and we seen what we can be when we all on the same accord and we all on the same page so when we got to TCU and the talent level got a little higher we was already put together and like, okay, this is the job and this is what we're going to do. Even though we fell short, you know, you always got to find a good and a bad. And that was a good defensive performance. And performing the way we performed against Sam Houston, that's only keep on giving us motivation, giving us momentum. And we're looking forward to the matchup against a good Texas Tech team this weekend. Now you made the position change. Mm-hmm. What, what, Safety and linebacker. What was that? transition life, is it what you thought it would be? And you... um, dating back to Oklahoma, yeah, it was hard because there's a lot of things about the linebacker position that I didn't get in high school because in high school, they'll put me in the box a little bit, but you know, when it's a 350 pound Creed Humphrey or Marquise Hayes who plays for the Cardinals barreling down on you and you got to use your hands and physically get them off you, yeah, it's a little different. So I had to get over that hump of putting on weight, getting stronger, learning the ins and outs of the position, ways that I can get all blocks, ways that I can read, read the film to play faster. So, you know, it was a three year long journey and I finally feel like I got the hang of it. It's still so, I ain't even scratched the surface of what I can be. So I'm excited about the direction I'm going, and I love linebacker. I don't want to play nothing else. So I fell in love with the position. That's tough on the job training. Those those things that you mentioned. Yeah, that's yeah, job. like those. That's what that, I mean. That's where my confidence comes from because when I was so young, I was playing against Marquise Hayes. I was playing against Creed Humphrey. I was playing against Ramon J. Stevenson, who's now the running back for the Patriots. I was going against these high level guys, and. I, I, it was ways that I could do better back then because obviously I was just learning to play the position, but the way I was competing, I, that gave me confidence. And now that I got the technique down, I got the film session down, film study down, it's just my confidence just keep going up and I'm just excited to keep the train going and doing anything I can to help the team win. When you talk about staying consistent and you mentioned how you sort of found yourself sort of having a lull a little bit last mm -hmm. week, how do you just taking a step back and refocus because it was one point in the drive I came to the sideline we three didn't out them but I came to the sideline I'm like nah you know you lazy for that because it was something that I did like nah you know you lazy for that so just having to refocus and taking a step back I felt like that helped me and plus just Staying consistent and away from football because standing consistent away from football and discipline away from football, that only makes football easier because football is a discipline game and a mental game. So just staying consistent in my life, you know, going upstairs every day to watch film, getting treatment every day, getting some type of homework done every day, that's the type of stuff that's going to help me stay consistent on the football field because football is life. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever you do in life, it's going to translate on the football field. So staying disciplined in my own everyday life, that's just going to continue to help me stay consistent and not try to revert back to those lazy ways, even if we're up by 30 points and things like that. This might be your fourth game against Texas Tech. Right? Yeah. Close to what, uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, what do you is the same type of Texas Tech team? Mm -hmm. Is that sort of what you what you have to expect on defense to um, No, I don't think they're the same team. They I feel like they're always getting better in, in different aspects. They have a, a great coach that you know, gets them to play hard. Uh, they have a they, they had took a wound, they took a blow at the quarterback position, but I still feel like their backup quarterback can still play a little football. Their running back, he's a good running back. He plays with balance. He plays downhill. He's fast. He has good feet for five, ten, two, thirty guys. So I, I really feel like this is going to be a test for us as a defense and as a team. And we're looking forward to that test to go to go up to Lubbock in a, a great environment like that, and just lining up and trying to execute against a team like that. Your son, Jamason's right around a year old? Yeah, he turned one uh, Sunday after the game. Yeah, we're throwing a party for him. Okay, and he has seen you start in the last couple of games? Yeah, he's seen me. He's seen me play. What's uh, that mean? It means a lot because, like I said in the media that we did before, like that's my why. Like That's my true why. He's the reason that I buckled down and changed the way I was living and changed the way I approached things. So seeing him in the stands with my mom, you know, I kind of glanced over to the parent section, seeing him in the stands with my mom, my girlfriend, my, my family, and then coming over to him after the games and seeing him just happy to see me, even though he don't too much understand what's going on. I, he just know that his dad out there just, I don't know, it's, it's a lot, it's overwhelming to the point a good overwhelming of feelings because it's, it's, I don't know how to feel about it. It's just when your why is in the stands, it kind of makes you play a little harder. So I'm just I'm just blessed to have a son like that in the family that supports me the way they do. It's a big uh, big adjustment from, from all right. Well, when they're one, they get a little bit more. Where you yeah, yeah. Stuff, but the early days, I'm sure. Yeah, the early days, especially because I had them during the season last year. So you know the sleepless nights, um, the. Yeah, the sleepless nights, the, it's a lot, man. I, I don't want to go too much into details, but it's a lot. The diaper changing. The diaper, <laughs> the diaper changing, all of that. So last year, when he was one month, two months, three months, it was very hard for me to watch film or focus on football because I know that I got one hour of sleep and we used to practice in the mornings last year. So I got two hours of sleep and I got to be up here at six in the morning to practice and I have a bad practice. So like it, it was hard, but like now that I got the hang of things, he's getting older, he's starting to understand that this, this is no, this is a no, no. Yes, you can do this. It's just getting easier. And now it's fun now because like he's starting to get his personality. So yeah, it's, it's just starting to get fun. And like, as he get older, it's only going to get more and more crazier. So. Get him any football stuff yet? Yeah, uh, my guy right here got him a jersey, you know what I'm saying, for the football games. Uh, I bought him toys, got him blankets, you know what I'm saying? He's really into trucks right now, so, you know what I'm saying? He's just playing with trucks, but I'm just I'm just glad to see him at the games now. He's finally could come to the games. Did his name have any? Oh, Ja, J A H. Ja is the Rastafarian guy in the Jamaican Rastafarian religion. And Ja, um, so, and I'm real, I'm a big reggae fan and into the Bob Marley's, into the different reggae scenes. So growing up, and that kind of helped me through a lot of depression, the reggae music kind of helped me through a lot of depression. So I named him Ja after that. And Mason, Mason is like the, the bricks, like I forgot the real definition of it, but they build bricks and they build mines and things like that. So he's a strong guy. and. I wanted to name him Ja, and my girlfriend wanted to name him Mason, and her mom was like, why don't y'all put them together? So Ja Mason then just came and took it and ran with it. How did you work yourself into the backup position? Uh, you know, um, it was just a, when I got here, just a bunch of meetings with Coach Birch, and um, you know, just I just had to work my way through, no matter what, like practice, even meetings, meeting before, meeting after. You know, all that comes together with where I am now. Coach Burchett shared a story with us in, uh, in, in camp about how he was on a recruiting trip and somebody sent him some video of you. And next thing you know, he's, he's yeah. out in California. We, we've heard his say, can you tell sort of where, where you, where, what your role was in this and how you, how when U of H got out there, sort of how it all played out? Oh yeah, so I'm just, I wake up and see Coach Burch follow me. I mean, I just message, message him and then you know, I get a phone call. He's just like, "What's up?" Uh, you know, I'm I'm in Louisiana right now, so he's like, "I'm gonna catch a flight tomorrow to come see you throw. Is that okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> was it something that that you wanted to? You know, what was it about U of H that sort of were you just 
did you send out to a lot of schools or did you reach out and try to, you know, just see who would bite? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, whatever coaches follow me, I tried to get my film out, you know, because I, was, I wasn't recruited highly, like, out of JUCO or high school. So, you know, it really was just like whatever, whatever one comes, I'm going to be grateful and take it. What did you see on that first throw, the trick play? <laughs> the trick play. Uh, I seen I seen Stacy had beat the corner, so I'm just thinking like, okay, I'm gonna just air it out, see if he could, you know, I'm gonna air it out, see if because I seen him, he burned him, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna throw it. But what I didn't see was a safety on the other side, so it was a bad part on my my part, but you know, we learned from those. And then after you throw the slant to Stacy. And I mean, you can tell immediately he's gone, right? Yeah. What are you thinking there? Well, I didn't think he was gone. I thought it'd be like a cool 25 yard game, but I seen him take off. I'm just like, it's my first touchdown. I got to sink it in. It's amazing. Well, can you take us through maybe uh, early on? You played for your dad, I believe, one season, and then uh, your, the recruiting process. So you said there weren't very many out of high school? Yeah, no. Um, yeah, so uh, I played for my dad on my high school years, and then sophomore year is when I f when when I get to start. Junior year, I break uh, I fracture my fibula and my tibia, so I'm out my whole junior season. And then senior season is COVID, so we didn't really get to play that much football. So I had I had went to Oregon, played six games, and then you know the transfer portal was a big thing at the time, so. I mean, it's still a big thing now, but they got, they, were, they weren't really looking at high school guys like that anymore, so I knew I had to take the Juker out. I mean, I was fine with it, you know, just another opportunity to play. And gray shirted my, gray shirted my freshman year and then played one year at Juco, and then now I'm here. I mean, some guys, when they go Juco, they go to get, you know, you get film, you know, people can see more. And some people go knowing that Hey, I, you know, in so many words, I'm better. You know, I, I should be somewhere else. I mean, how did you feel? Like, what, was that sort of like you knew it was a stop just to get, you know, you wanted people to see you on film, get that kind of stuff? And I mean, yeah, um, I want to take this football thing as far as, as I possibly can. And, uh, you know, being at JUCO, it, it really humbled me to be grateful for the things I have. And, you know, because not a lot of people get to, the opportunity to play football. So I just, had to be grateful for everything. What were the adjustments going from JUCO to a school like this? Like film, practice? Um, I mean, my JUCO coaches were good. You know, they prepared, they really prepared us for, you know, what practices would be like over here, like at a D1 level and like the film room too. Like it's a, it's really not, it wasn't really much of a hard transition because of, you know, the way our coaches were coaching us to be. What do you think you need to improve this year? Uh, I think I need to improve in a, a lot, but I mean, the main thing right now is, uh, I mean, the main thing right now for me is uh, just being ready for when the time has come, because you know, you gotta stay ready at all times. Gotta make the most of the reps I get in practice. You know, just mental reps is a really big thing for me now. Ooh, the injuries that you mentioned, those, those are serious. I mean, did, what did you, how did you get through that, and was it a long process? Uh, you know, it was, I mean, when I injured, like, when I injured it, I, I didn't think it was that bad. And then they had told me that, you know, what happened, and I was just like, man, like, I know God has another plan for me, so, you know, I was just willing to follow that plan wherever it took me, and, you know, it led me to where I am now. Was it in practice? or? In oh, practice? it was in a game. I was running and then the dude had put my shoulder down and then like my ankle, like my foot just like felt weird after the tackle and I was just just down for a couple of like a couple of minutes. When when Houston came out to watch you, did did you get a a sense that okay this this may be the place or did it take a, a few you know days or weeks before you heard back or? Uh, yeah, I mean I knew it was a place. Because when I first met Coach Burge, he was a good dude, cool dude. And, you know, just just talking with him and Hogerson, I just knew, like, you know, this this could be my home for the next next three to four, three years. And you 
said they were, they, he started following you? Was it like on Twitter? That's oh, yeah, yeah. Social media? Yeah. I mean, I'm not really a big social media guy, but, you know, Twitter, Twitter, I just had Twitter just, you know, whoever followed me just reach out with my film and stuff, so. <laughs> Catches your eye a little bit, right, when you see a, a college coordinator for a coach. Just, oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, every coach that followed me, I'm like, oh, bet. <laughs> What's it like as a quarterback working with Dana Holgerson? Like, how is what has he given you that, that you maybe didn't expect? Uh, I mean, Coach Holgerson's a good, a, a great guy. He, um, you know, he's he's talking to me, like asking me, like, you know, um, he's asking me how I'm doing as a QB. He's like making sure like I'm making the right reads. He's telling me what I should read and. You know, Coach Burris also does a great job with that, too, so. We'll definitely call you Uwe, but I wanted to make sure. I saw somewhere, is your first given name? Oh, yeah. Uh, like 20, it's like 27 yeah, letters. Yeah, like 21 letters. <laughs> what, what's the background? Uh, background, it's a, from where my dad's from, uh, it's a pathway to the Chief's house out there. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, Uwe Olevanu Seula Oleolo. Uh, and just moving forward, uh, how has it been, you know, within the quarterback room, you know, with Donovan, with yeah, Caleb, you know. Yeah, they're all great guys. Donnie's a great, Donnie's a great leader. Lucas is also a great leader. Caleb's another great guy, you know. And you got, you got guys like Jake, Jake, Jed, and, you know, Indiana. Those are also great guys. Great QB room. There's not much I can say about them because they're, Good guys. You had to catch up pretty fast, right? I mean, when you got here, was it was it? In oh yeah, this summer, yeah. So it was it sort of a you know one of those crash course where you know here's the playbook. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just burst like where we were meeting like almost like once like twice a week, talking about the plays and like what we should read and like what we're looking for here and yeah. Can you spell your first name? Yeah, U I O. L E V A N U S E A U L A O L E O L O. Well, Moses, what's it been like to, to get back on the field and uh, make up for some lost time? Yeah, I feel great. It's my first time on the field since 21, I think, in Juca. Yeah, I feel good out there playing alongside my teammates. It's been a, you know, everybody has a journey. Uh, and just not being able to play last year, was that? About yeah. as tough as they can get for you. Yeah, most definitely it was tough on me. Like watching, I couldn't even travel, so watch, I had to stay home, watch the guys on TV and all that. And being out of football for, I don't know how long, probably over a year, was kind of tough, yeah. Saturday was your first start, right? Right. And on your first play, you go down and make a tackle on special teams? Yes, sir. So, What's going through your mind at that point? Like you finally get in and you make a play immediately. I was fired up. I told the guys on the sideline that I was gonna make tackle down there. Watch a film, I see they like to the double to seven and that's, that's the position I play. All I had to do is beat the first guy. Once I beat the first guy, nobody else there would block me. Yeah. What's been the, you know, I, I remember when you committed and right. you were number one corner in yeah. the country or, or one, one of the top. Uh, what, what's, what was that like, that process? transitioning from Kilgore okay. to, to, to here? It was crazy. I enjoyed it a lot, though, the recruiting process and all that. Had a lot of big other schools, but Houston went home. Well, I want to stay close to my mama and them. They had 40 men downstream. I'm originally from Galveston, Texas. So yeah, I want to stay home. What are you improving on? What are you working on this year, just trying to get better at? Everything, really, but most, mostly film. That's another reason I haven't been playing this year. Haven't um, like learned the plays and all that. I've been doing more like in the um, meeting room, defensive meeting room. My coach emphasized doing something different, like the re taking an extra step, like not just going home watching film. I've been going upstairs with the coaches watching film, um, doing the extra stuff, extra um, recovery, stuff like that. When you go, you go, you watch it on like an iPad, right? When I go home, we all watch it on iPad. So you're going through these plays and, and right. learning things. What what are you really getting out of that? Like, what are you learning from play to play? 
I'm looking at the formations, like how, what they run out of certain formations. I'm looking at the um, wide receivers, like what they like to do the most, speed releases, stuff like that. Is this level what you thought it would be? And you know, now Big 12 play started, have you maybe got a little taste of, of, of what's to come? Yeah, I got a little taste of it. What's that, you know, what, what, what was it like, you know, the, for you know, like the TCU game and then TCU, yeah. you know, knowing that this week you'll be in Lubbock, you know, you, it's a long way from yeah. Gilmore and Brenham and Tyler and all those places. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. I heard the atmosphere is crazy. I heard they like throw to tears. Uh, yeah. I want to see that like, food, man. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and just fitting in in the secondary, uh, what's that? What's that been like? You know, with with, with the other guys, and, and I know yeah. you've been banged up a little bit. But yeah. As, as oh yeah. Transition been. I love them guys, man. Last week we had um, the TCU game. We had before the TCU game. We had Noah Guzman, Antonio Bridge go down. So last week, the whole last week, I was playing safety. Yeah. So I learned the safety helped me with the defense a little more. And Moses, if you were, just since we haven't had a chance to talk to you, you know, just, you know, anything, like, backstory, anything about you that sticks out, something that you're proud of, something, it looks like you're in the taps. Uh, oh, yeah. Stories there or anything, or is there, you know, just something off the field? Is, is Some, I feel, I told him my tattoo. I came here, really, with just this top piece. So since I've been here, I, had, I got all this done, all this. I got an NFL tattoo that said, never finished last. NFL? Yeah, never finished last. Be on that. So you, uh, was it just pick one and you, just, whatever inspires you, and then you just sit in yeah, the Yeah, I just. Up. That's a lot of hours, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think, like, each piece, like, six hours. Wow. Yeah. It's definitely in the off season. Yeah, it's off season, most definitely. Couple more? The, if I could just double check on um, last year was it and if you don't mind me asking was it just like a transcript deal coming from juco or was it because of when you got to houston no nah, um when i transferred i transferred without enough credits okay. and then we tried to like um send us to ncaa for them like, yeah but they denied it okay. yeah they denied it and then we appealed it and they denied it again so i just set out so i used my red shirt year last year so was it like scout team you do that kind of stuff? yeah i was on scout team now last year yeah does that take you when, when you when you've been where you were and you know even at JUCO level you were successful? Is yeah. that tough sitting there knowing that okay I'm putting in all this work right but on Saturday but you can't play yeah yeah that was tough that was real tough and um excuse me with scout team situation like they take us away from the defense like the starting defense so I couldn't know the plays so this year my like first year actually like learning the plays actually. So, yeah. yeah, they don't want you to yeah, yeah, yeah. play like you're the right. opposing team. Right. When you're at home and the, your team's playing, but you had to sit out. Right. You're watching the games? You're into the games? All of them, yes, sir. Yeah. What is it? How does that? Is that a struggle? What is that? A struggle? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir, most definitely. Like, I had people calling me and telling me why I'm not playing. I had to explain it to, like, multiple people, like, why I wasn't playing and all that, why I'm at home, where you at. Stuff like that. But I support the guy. I got a lot of videos in my phone from every game with my former teammates or current teammates making plays out there. You got any uh, Isaiah Hamilton story? Just, I mean, you meet these guys and you get to know them. Did, did anything jump out about him right when you met him? Yeah, his confidence. He came in with, with like a little swag. He's been backing it up lately too. He's a great player. He's a baller. Yeah, touched. I mean, yeah, he's a baller. Got called back, but it was still a touchdown. Right. And the same thing with like uh, like AJ. You know, AJ comes with a uh, reputation as a hitter. I don't yep. know if uh, when you guys were out there, do you all sort of compete against each other for, you know, who's getting tackles, who's getting picks, you know, that kind of stuff? Right, yeah. Like Sam Houston game, the um, post ball they threw, he had a chance to pick it. I was talking to him during the play. Grab it, AJ, grab it. We always compete, yeah.